Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing another entry in the Will It Fail series. And today we are going to be talking about Marvel's Eternals, which is releasing in theaters today, uh, November 5th, 2021. And uh, basically, uh, th this movie has kind of, it's been, um, it, it's been kind of on people's minds a little bit, because Marvel has been toting this thing quite a bit, um, and they've been toting the director a lot too, uh, Chloe Zhao, um, and the reason why is because she just came off of directing Nomadland, which won a lot of Oscars last year, um, but she's not an extremely experienced uh, filmmaker, um, at least in terms of her filmography, but it, it, it We'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we start doing the breakdown. Uh, but basically, Eternals is supposed to be kind of a new property for Marvel. Um, they're getting ready to kind of... The, phase 4 for them has basically been kind of launching a lot of these new properties. Uh, you saw that with Shang-Chi. Uh, we're going to be getting... Or either that or continuing other properties as well, like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and stuff like that. But Eternals is one that they kind of wanted to really get off the ground. And keep in mind, this movie is also very large. It has a very large cast as well. Um, it is it, The, the runtime for this movie is two hours and 37 minutes, uh, which I think is a bit lengthy for something of this nature. Um, so... Now that we're kind of through the the basic semantics, I think most people have probably heard of the film. Let, let's go into the the basics, and we'll decide whether or not this film is probably going to make money. Uh, so let's let's take a look at the overarching picture here, and let let's start with the director. So, like I said, uh, Chloe Zhao is the director, and she's also a. Uh, Probably part of the reason why this movie is not getting a China release, which is another thing that's probably going to hurt its box office. Um, but Chloe Zhao is a director. Like I said, she just came off Nomadland, so she's she's won some Oscars. She's on a lot of you know people's tongues in Hollywood. Uh, again, even though it wasn't a smashing success as an Oscars broadcast. Um, and basically, uh, the the reason why uh, she kind of hurts the film is because, at least in terms of a financial stake, is because she came out um, and sided with a lot of people during the Hong Kong in, uh, incident with the Chinese. Um, and like I said, I I I don't get political, or at least I try not to. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dip my fingers in, into that whole fiasco. Although I would say that probably the people of Hong Kong deserve freedom. Most people do. Um, but uh, that immediately was a turnoff, and that movie was then uh, essentially banned from China, along with Shang-Chi, which was, again, Shang-Chi was the pandering movie. Um, this less so, but again, they were trying to, you know, again, go with that audience, so they're going to lose a decent amount there uh, from not having that audience, probably a, a decent amount, even though the Chinese are kind of getting weary of the American films these days for various reasons. Um so you're losing a good amount of chunk there. And apparently the movie has also been banned in a lot of Middle Eastern countries because this is the first Marvel film where they're going to be showing an openly gay superhero. I'm not sure which one of them it is because there's like 12 people in the cast. Um, but basically that was a big turnoff for them. So it has been banned in certain versions in certain countries over there. Um, and also Angelina Jolie has come out in a lot of press releases that basically called it a... Uh, Praising Disney for not cutting the movie, which, again, they've done numerous times with the Chinese audience, but apparently nobody cared about that. Um, but regardless, they're going to lose money there, and they're going to lose money from China, so that is a, a double hit for them, because, again, they were they were planning on doing a release in the Middle East. Now, I don't think it's going to be a massive chunk, at least from the Middle Eastern audience, not as much as the Chinese one, um, but uh, it's definitely not going to be uh, good for them to lose that money. Um, again, it's international, so you know it can be kind of negligible depending on how much the movie makes domestically. Now, uh, like I said, I wouldn't really take... I would take away... A bit of monetary for Chloe Zhao because of that. I would also say that she is not necessarily an experienced director with the budget that she is being handed for this film. Now, this film had a $200 million budget, um, roughly, or at least what is estimated. Um, so if it is $200 million, then that would mean that basically uh, what would happen is um, the film needs to make roughly around the 500 million mark to break even. Um, and again, that that's kind of a rough estimate. If it gets kind of close to that, you can probably say it broke even. Um, but in the case of this, um, I think that because there is such a large budget at stake, 
and because you have a director who's not experienced with that budget, that could lead to problems. Now, the other thing is, is that the advertising for this was not, uh, let's just say it wasn't very spot on. A lot of the trailers did not show a whole lot. And a lot of them were not, didn't really drum up a whole lot of excitement for the movie, unfortunately. So I, it didn't really sit well with a lot of people. I, I didn't really feel very, uh, I felt very underwhelmed by the trailers. Um, and then on top of that, it has not been getting good uh, critic review scores lately as well. It's scoring roughly in the 50% range uh, for most critics, including Rotten Tomatoes, who loves to boost these movies. Uh, because especially, you know, we saw what happened with Captain Marvel and various other things across the board. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on there, especially, again, the critic scores are not great. But moving past the director, we move on to the cast. Now, the cast itself... Um, has a lot of familiar faces to a lot of people that that know various movies. Um, you know, it has uh, Richard Madden and Kit Harrington, who are both off of Game of Thrones. Uh, Richard Madden is playing Icarus, and Kit Harrington is playing the uh, character known as Black Knight, um, which I guess is kind of. Uh, well, the other thing is, I haven't really seen Kit Harrington in a lot of the advertising for this, which is kind of odd to me, considering that he's a fairly big name on the cast, at least considering. Now, Richard Madden is also one of the people that's leading this. You also have uh, Angelina Jolie and Selma Hayek who are coming into this, who are two of the probably the more veteran actors. Uh, Camille Nagiani. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I am not. I am horrible at pronouncing names uh, that are not exactly familiar uh, with me. But I think it is pr uh, pronounced Kumail Najiani. I don't know if that is correct. I apologize if it is incorrect. Um, but the only the, the thing that happened with him though was is that he was kind of a um, he was on I believe it was Silicon Valley. And he always played kind of a nerdy guy, and then he got jacked to go do this movie, and apparently he broke Pornhub. That was actually one of the funniest things, I think, that came out of this. Um, but again, it's a lot of people that uh, most folks are familiar with seeing. But the other problem is, is there is a lot of superheroes in this movie. The Eternals themselves um, round out at roughly, uh, I, think, I think it's 10 to 11 of them. So, I mean, you're, you're introducing 10 to 11 new characters, so the fact that you might only touch on a few of them very lightly is probably going to wind up hurting at least the narrative portion of the movie. But again, I'm not really examining that right now because I haven't actually seen the film. But I can't take off points for the cast because they're familiar people. Audiences know them. They are going to be a, probably a decent box office draw for some people, especially Game of Thrones fans who liked those two characters. Um, so... I, I, I can't take really off for the cast. As I said before, the trailers were kind of underwhelming, so I can take off a little bit for that. Um, and the other thing is is that this movie is projected right now or to make roughly 75 uh, to $78 million this weekend. Um, I do not think it will hit that number. I do not think it will get close to that number. I think that we're probably going to see somewhere around the 60 to $65 million mark because we are seeing a bit of an uptick in uh, at least the Marvel films in terms of earning. Uh, Shang-Chi made about $53 million its opening weekend domestically. Um, I, I think, and then again, I'm talking about domestic numbers here. I'm not talking about worldwide. Domestic numbers, I don't think it's going to hit the 75. I think at most it's going to hit about 65. Uh, at lowest, I think you could probably drop to 60, maybe 59 or $58 million, but you're definitely going to bring stuff in because this movie is basically all by itself right now at the theaters. Um, there's not really a whole lot that came out in the previous week or two that's there to challenge it. Um, you have uh, Edgar Wright's uh, Last Night in Soho, which came out, but again, not really kind of the same demographic, very different type of uh, type of movie from this. This is, again, a general audience film, a blockbuster popcorn movie. Um, and it doesn't have a lot going on after it until two weeks down the road when Ghostbusters Afterlife is going to be coming out on November 19th. So it doesn't have a lot of competition going past this weekend. So it's definitely going to dominate the box office this weekend. It will hit the number one spot almost 100% certain it'll probably do that. Um, the only other thing that's coming out this weekend is that movie Finch with Tom Hanks, uh, which again, that's kind of a more of a niche movie. It's not a movie that's really going to challenge this one too, too much, I feel. Um, so this is, it's probably going to take the box office this weekend. Nothing else is going to make close to it. And then the second week drop off is really where you got to look at what's going to happen with this film. Cause again, there's not really a whole lot coming out next weekend either. 
So it'll probably take that weekend as well, but it depends on what we're seeing for a drop-off. If we're going by Black Widow and Shang-Chi numbers, Shang-Chi had a moderate drop-off that was pretty healthy for what it was. Again, this is also getting a... a, the, a a uh, solo theatrical release. It is not being released uh, simultaneously on any other platforms. It is just going to be in theaters. Um, so it's going to be able to, to ba take advantage of that box office in the way that it's going. And it didn't have that weird release like Dune did where it released like a month early in foreign markets. Um, so I, I think that it'll, it'll definitely conquer this weekend and next weekend. I think the total, by the time you get to Afterlife, Afterlife is going to bump this thing off. I guarantee you Ghostbusters Afterlife is going to bump this movie out of the number one spot when it comes out two weeks from now. Because um, there is a lot more, I think there's a lot more hype around that movie. I think there's a lot more uh, fan service around that movie. And I think the Ghostbusters fans, a lot of them, me included, are very excited to see that film. Um, so I, I think that, that that's going to be the taker. That's the one that's going to dump Eternals down a little bit at the domestic and international box office. But in total, um, I think this movie is probably going to wind up around Shang-Chi numbers, even though it's going to have a better opening weekend than Shang-Chi did. I think it's probably going to wind up somewhere around the $400 uh, million to $450 million mark. I don't think it's going to hit $500 um, it may get close if it gets a little bit more money, but I don't think it's going to hit the 500 million mark. I think it's going to probably peak around uh, around 450 million, um, and it's also going to depend on how many people are going to go and sit through this thing. Because again, it's a two-hour and 37-minute movie. If you have like uh, to, to, to give a kind of a decent comparison. Um, I'm fairly certain that the first Infinity War was about two and a half hours. That had a massive amount of build up to it. It made a buttload of money. Again, it was pre-COVID, but still. Um, but that movie also had a, a, things going on from beginning to end. There was always shit going on in that movie. This movie, based on what the trailers are showing me, is a lot of character stuff. It's a lot of um, sort of kind of explanation type of things because again we're going to have to get explained how the Eternals are there why they're there what their past is supposedly I think this is supposed to take place in two different time frames uh, if I remember right um, so there's going to be a lot of exposition in this movie too which again that serves to kind of bog down the plot which is why a lot of other Marvel movies before they introduce properties they do little teases or they do little things in other movies to kind of introduce them in this case it doesn't seem like they're doing that um, so there's going to be there should be a lot of exposition in this movie otherwise a lot of it's not going to make sense but like I said that's my prediction I think it's going to top out at you know at max probably like 480 to 490 million dollars at the box office. I don't think it's going to do anything too insane. I think it'll probably wind up around the same area, uh, probably a little bit more than Shang Chi, or around the same area, depending on you know how good it does on the second weekend, uh, because it will still be dominant on that weekend before Ghostbusters comes out. So. That's my final say on it. I think it's probably going to basically come close to, if not break even. Uh, but I want to know what you think. If you guys uh, are you guys going to go see Eternals this weekend? Are you excited for it? Are you not excited for it? Have you read the reviews? Have you not read the reviews? Um, do you uh, do you like the idea of it being adapted? You know that whole thing. You know, put your thoughts in the comments below as usual. I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?